you need to start with a prayer party. God initiates the call. So in other words, I don't come with my own vision on what I want God to do. And this is why we get frustrated. And then when God doesn't do it, you get upset at God. Yep. God is not obligated to answer your prayers that are not called according to his will. Yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. What's up, family? It's up? Jamin. And you guys know him. Pastor Ken. Pastor Ken here. Y'all, we're here for the Crossover Church Overtime, overtime. podcast. What does that mean, overtime? Well, you know, we both play basketball. So yeah. in a game, whenever it's tied up, you have to go into what they call overtime. Wow. You get to go a little bit deeper, and you get to play for a little bit longer. And so what we're doing is we're taking the yeah. series, Love the City, and we're going a little bit deeper into what it talks about. So basically you were saying I was preaching too long, couldn't finish <laughs> it, so we had to create a podcast because we went over time. So here we are. Somebody say confidence <laughs> monitor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Man, so we're excited. What I want to do is I just want to set it up for us really quick. So what yeah. happens? Nehemiah is a cupbearer for the king, yep. and he gets a burden, a burden to go back and rebuild the wall for the temple. And so this is kind of where our story picks up. Yeah. Well, that's a lot right there. So let's pause. You didn't say vision. You said burden. Now, I believe in a vision. God gives visions. But why did we use the terminology burden? Well, a burden is something that is God given. I mean, we yeah. have a lot of burdens in life in general, but specifically when it's a burden from God, it yeah. starts with God starts and with it God. builds his kingdom. Yeah. So before we go any further, we want to park right here where we're talking about getting a burden or vision. If you want to use that terminology, it starts with God. God is the initiator of yeah. the call. The reality is when someone calls me on the phone, they have something to say. And that's what happens when God, when he calls us, he has something to say. We want to be attentive to what he's saying, and he gives us a burden. And so we see in the book of Nehemiah, uh, he goes back to build the wall of Jerusalem. They were in destitute for about 70 years. God calls the children of Israel back, but the wall is decimated. So they didn't have a place to worship God. And God calls Nehemiah from his place of comfort to a place of stepping out on faith to advance the kingdom of God. Well, it's so interesting that you say that. One of the things you said in the sermon series was whenever God gives you a burden and whenever yeah. he sets you on the path to do stuff for his glory, he's not going to put you in a comfortable situation. No. He doesn't put you in plus situations. He puts mm. you in situations that are actually problems. Can you talk about that for a sec? Yeah, God always calls us to solve problems. And this is what we have a tendency to do. We pray for God to give us a job. Yeah. Then six months later, God, can you take me away because I don't like the job because it's full of problems. Well, that's why God brought you in that situation to fix a problem. Yeah. So when God gives you a burden, it's always to fix a problem. And, and oftentimes we're right where God wants us to be, but we don't like the issues that we're facing. So we want to get out of the situation. And that's why God brought you into the problematic situation that you have. So Nehemiah now. He goes and he asks a question to his brothers. I want to pick up the story because in Nehemiah chapter one, right out the gate, it says that Hananiah, one of his brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And it says that I questioned them about the remnant that had survived the exile in Jerusalem. So Nehemiah's life radically changes because of the question that he asked. And it was a question of concern. Yeah. And they said, man, it's not going well. So in layman's term, Nehemiah said, what's going on back at the hood? I know I'm at the palace right now. I'm the cup bearer. I'm drinking good. Yeah. I'm in the text and everything's looking good. And they say, man, things are not going well at home. It's just like this. An NBA player makes a lot of money. He said, what's going back on in the hood? And he ends up leaving his comfortable job in the NBA yeah. and going back home because God calls us to solve problems. God calls us to solve problems. And and it's so crazy because I feel like in our lives, we're confronted with a lot of problems, but kind of one of the basic terms that we say in our culture today is yeah. that's not my problem. That's not my problem. That's not my issue. Yeah. Do you think that sometimes we might miss God's purpose for us because we're like, that's not, it's not my issue. I'm not dealing with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so funny. If I can be honest, my wife's telling me about problems at, at church or school or I always say, I got my own problems. <laughs> <laughs> I got 99 problems, but yours is not one. But anyway, no. So some of the things that people say, I got my own problems. Well, for me, it's not even a problem. You said it was a problem. That means God is probably asking you to fix the problem. I didn't even notice it was an issue. Yeah. You know, you can be in church or you can be on your job and you say, man, I wish they would. I wish they would have someone who would. I wish they 
would have someone. The reason it's a problem because probably you haven't stepped in to what God is asking you to step into. When they going to do this? When are you going to do this? And so when God gives you a burden, he starts to give you eyes to see things that other people can't see. And so Nehemiah on a regular day at work doing his regular job, he asked a question and it changed his whole trajectory of what God was calling him to do. Yeah. And it's so interesting because Nehemiah really did three specific things. And I think you kind of hammered on these okay. I mean, the entire sermon series. Yeah. I mean, I think you said it like typically you don't remember 95 percent. 95 what was preached in a sermon. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't even know what I'm preaching on Sunday. I don't remember what I said last Sunday. But what I love is this. And I think everybody can catch it from our series. And if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, wherever, I want you to put in the comments. Let's say it at the same time. One, two, three. We pray. Right. Plan and pursue. pursue. You might not remember anything I said all year about any sermon series, but I believe if you can take those three words and implement it into your life, it will change, man, what you pray about. It will change uh, the areas you pursue in life. And typically, this is what we do. This is what I've done. We typically plan, pursue, and then pray. Wait, so you're telling me that my vision board parties are all wrong? They're all wrong. They're all wrong. Yeah, take it off the wall. So, ladies, I know what you're thinking. You're already planning it. You got a vision board party. You got the popcorn. You got the pajamas. You're watching Waiting to Exhale. And I need you to take a deep breath right now. Take all the cosmopolitan, all the different posters off the vision board. I felt the Holy Spirit on that one. (laughs) You need to start with a prayer party. God initiates the call. So in other words, I don't come with my own vision on what I want God to do. And this is why we get frustrated. And then when God doesn't do it, you get upset at God. God is not obligated to answer your prayers that are not called according to his will. I'm going to say that one more time. God is not obligated to answer your prayers if it's not according to his will. And so what we need to do is spend time in intentional prayer to receive the vision or the revelation that God already has over our lives. If we catch this, it says that we have been predestined, which means before you were born, God already had a purpose. He tells Jeremiah that you're going to be a prophet unto the nations when he was in the mother's womb, which means God has plans for me that are good, that are predestined, that are ordained before I was even born. That's good. But we got to let go of good things for God things. Yeah. That's huge. So prayer is not me necessarily asking God for all these different things that I want to happen in my life, but it's more so partnering with God and what he's already planned for my life. No, that's good. James four, verse three, you you ask not because you have not. We love that. Oh yeah. You got to ask or he won't give it to you, but it says you won't get it if you pray something according to your selfish pleasures. Yeah. So one of the things I have to wrestle with when I pray, sometimes God will say no. Sometimes he will say slow and sometimes he will say go. Yeah. And so I got to distinguish that. I got to let go of some of the good things for the God thing. So when people come up to me and say, hey, pastor, how come we don't do this? How don't we come do that? Number one, he might be asking you to do that. Yeah. Amen, somebody. I think sometimes people think that when God calls them to do something, it always has to be in the context of a church. Right. God's called me to preach. Well, go home and preach to your kids. Yep. They're not listening to you, so why would hundreds of people listen to you? Oh. <laughs> well, that would, right there for well, a second. <laughs> well, that would disqualify me. So anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying is we need to take inventory, number one, over did we really get a revelation from God? So when someone says God has told me, the question I'm going to ask is what does your prayer life look like? Yeah. I discovered that so many people who don't pray, God is always speaking to them. Like me, God speaks to me, but I'm not going to act like God speaks to me every day. Right. No, God, sometimes he will speak to you. He's like a GPS. When you're riding in your car, your GPS doesn't say, keep going. Keep going, Jamin. Keep going. You're going straight. Keep going. <laughs> when you start to go the wrong way, that's right. when the GPS yeah. will say recalculating. And yeah. that's what happens with God. Let me encourage somebody, man. If you're doing what God's called you to do and you're like, man, I'm not hearing God's voice, keep going. Yeah. Just keep going. But anytime you fall off track, you're going the wrong way, it might be a detour. He will route you to where you're supposed to go. And so Nehemiah gets to a place where he says, I'm going to step out on faith and pursue what God has called him to do. But here's the problem. He was the cupbearer and then there was a king. 
His job was to literally uh, drink. Okay, never mind. My mind needs to be redeemed. <laughs> in order for the cupbearer to not die. And so he needed permission from the cupbearer, the king. And if we're going to step out and do what God's called us to do, what do we need? We need permission from the king yeah. to do what God has called us to do. And so that's the part, man. Nehemiah starts to pray. And I love what it says in, in chapter 1. Uh, verse 11, he prays this, give your servant success today by granting favor in the presence of this man. So Nehemiah prays this, and this is what I pray every day. God, give me vision to see what I can't see. And then also I want you to give me favor amongst men. Yeah, that's huge. And I love how he said, give me success today. It kind of shows that this is going to be a day by day thing that yeah. we're going against here. Yeah. Like whenever you're pursuing something, it's not all going to happen at once. It's not all going to happen at the same time. It's going to be a step by step process that happens slowly. And I think that's the part that sometimes we as Christians, even myself, so me too, yeah. that we don't like because it takes a while. And we're in a culture that's a microwave culture. You want to put it in there, 30 yeah. seconds, pop it out, then it's done. But you said something really good. While we're in the wait, while we are having faith and while we're praying and you know, while yeah. we're planning and all these things, God is actually growing something on mm. the inside of us. Yeah, it's like an incubator. So on that point, we see Nehemiah, he prays and says, grant me success today. But in chapter two, verse one, it says in the month of Nissan. Now we're thinking like, what is Nissan? I thought that was a car. I thought it was too. You thought yeah, it was a car. It, it is was. a car. <laughs> but God did not answer Nehemiah's prayer until about four months later. Come but on. I would suggest to you that he answered Nehemiah's prayer the day that he prayed it. Mm. It was just Nehemiah was in the waiting room. Wow. Why? Because Either Nehemiah wasn't ready for the answered prayer or the king wasn't ready to grant him favor. Now, here's a question we have to wrestle with right here. If God answered all your prayers right now, would you be ready for it? Wow. God, I want you to bless my business right now. Do you have a business plan? Yep. <laughs> so in the waiting room, so we pray and we plan, then we pursue. Yeah. So Nehemiah prayed but then he was planning. So when the king said, hey, Nehemiah, what's going on? Nehemiah broke down a six step process yep. where the king was like, oh, OK, he's serious about this. So Nehemiah took time to plan out what he believed God was going to do in his life. Yeah. And he was even able to answer the king. The king yeah. and even the queen had questions. for oh, him, yeah. And he was able and prepared to answer those questions. Yeah, sister girl, you better be able to answer those questions <laughs> because, better. hey, man, this was during a time where they was partying, man. And yeah. it's like, Nehemiah, like, you messing up my high right now, bro. Yeah. It's like, what's going on? Now, the king could have killed Nehemiah. So he said, Nehemiah, why are you looking sad right now? And he says, goes back to the clarity of the burden. Things are not going well back at home. He was clear. I'm going back to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem so we can have a place of worship. And so a question that we need to think about. What wall is God asking you to build right now? What wall is he asking you to build? Yeah. And then what brick is the next step for you to build that wall? Yeah, that's so good. Mm -hmm. And one thing I know about burdens that are from God is that whenever they happen, they always involve other people. Oh, yeah. If it doesn't involve somebody else, it's probably not a burden from God. No, no. So this is what we got to think about. We're talking about advancing the kingdom of God. We're not talking about advancing our own agenda. And so when God gives you a burden, it should ultimately advance God's agenda. Now, you're going to be blessed in the process, yeah. but it's not to build the wall just so I can have a bigger palace. Right. It's, it's got to be something bigger than that. So in other words, man, if you have all the money, if you have all the resources, all the talent right now, it's not a vision or burden from God. When we started our church, this was the question that I would ask people. If time if money, if education was not an issue and yep. you could not fail, what would you do for the kingdom of God? Because the first thing we think about, I don't have the money, I don't have the education. No, I'm telling you what God has called you to do. He is going to put people there for you. He's going to uh, provide the finances for you. He's going to provide the provision, the resources. All you have to do is have faith, not only to wait, but faith to go. Yeah, that's good. 
And, and the question I would even ask is, mm -hmm. are you ready for the people? I yeah. mean, if you are starting a business plan, have you put together a plan for your people that are going to be working with you? Yeah. And then even us as Christians, we all have different positions. Some of us are going to be the leads. Some yeah. of us might be in the middle. We might just be a supervisor or a manager. And then there are others of us who are just going to be in the working part of the vision. And are you prepared for whatever part that God has put you in to be content there? Because I even know myself, sometimes I can, you know, get kind of antsy if I'm not necessarily taking charge on the thing, or I can get yeah. kind of antsy if I'm the only one, you know, taking charge. Are you ready to be in the position that God has you in while leading? Yeah. So Nehemiah, he steps out on faith to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And this is the part we love. Like, this is where we put it on Instagram. This is where we tell everybody what God's going to do. God's going to do some amazing things. We update our, our Facebook status and then we get smacked in the face. Because when we get to Nehemiah chapter 4, and Nehemiah now is stepping out doing what God has called him to do. But there's some people lurking in the background. Oh, yeah. Sam Ballot, it says in verse 1, heard that they were rebuilding the wall and he became angry. I want you to think about this. When you really step out on faith, you have a real enemy who does not like you yep. and it makes him angry. And so a lot of times, man, I'm not ex experiencing any spiritual warfare. I'm going to pray for you <laughs> yeah. because when you're facing difficulties in life, it does not necessarily mean you're doing the wrong thing. It could be you're actually doing the right thing. Now, yeah. if you're here and you just a fool right now and you just, you know what I'm talking about. You're doing some things that YouTube would take this video down. If I expressed all the sin that you're committing in your life, amen, somebody, Amen. I'm gonna throw my cash app hey, up there. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you really getting a burden from God and you're stepping out to do it. God has called you to do and you're like is it worth it because I'm experiencing so much challenging and so much difficulty right now because the enemy wants you to give up and it says that Nehemiah what did he do he went back and he prayed yeah and this is amazing when I look at the story of Nehemiah he doesn't respond to his haters or anything he continues to pray yeah that's huge I mean with great opportunities come great opposition that's something that you said, and I think that's so good. And and essentially what, what a lot of us face in life is ridicule and criticism. Yeah. I mean, from families, from mm -hmm. friends, and from partners, for, even from ourselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. We face this major criticism about this thing, and I think yeah. sometimes we can get uncomfortable because it wasn't something that started in our hearts, yeah. but it was something that started in God's hearts. And so yeah. we don't always fully know what it is, and so that yeah. can sometimes make us uncomfortable, but I think that's where the faith part comes in so heavy. Yeah, God does not show us the whole picture, but he shows us the next step. Yeah. Uh, Nehemiah, it was one brick at a time. It says in verse 6 of chapter 4 that they started to rebuild the wall. It was halfway built, and they did it with enthusiasm. Then the enemy comes to frustrate them. Then they get to a place where they say, we don't want to do it anymore. Now, wait a minute. It was halfway built. They were excited about it. Yeah. Then they looked at the wall that was halfway built, and they were discouraged. Yeah. So are you looking at your cup half full or half empty? Okay. And this is what we got to do. It's, it's day by day. It's step by step. It's a process on where God has taken us. We walk by faith. We don't run by faith. Yeah. Which okay. means God does not order our leaps. He orders our steps. But we got to get to a place where we deal with spiritual warfare because the enemy has strategic plans. He does. Yeah. yeah. And I, I feel like we all sometimes get beaten down by the criticism so much that yeah. we get to a point where we throw our hands in the air and we just say, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Why is that actually a good place to be in whenever we say we can't do it anymore? Man, when you say, when I say, I can't do this anymore, God is finally like, finally, finally, sit your butt down. <laughs> yeah. Let me take the wheel. I'm yeah. a God who doesn't sleep nor slumber. Why are you up all night trying to fix out the problem? Come on. Come on. And so, man, this is a good place to be. When you and I say we can't do it no more, that's when God shows up. The Bible says when we're weak, that's when he's strong. But as you continue to pursue, that's where the enemy, he turns up the heat in our lives. Yes, and so does. we talked about four categories of spiritual warfare. The first category is unaware. That maybe you're watching today and you're unaware of spiritual warfare. You think the devil is just a figment of your imagination. You yep. think he's wearing a Nike jumpsuit <laughs> on, <laughs> on, a, pitchfork. <laughs> on a hot sauce bottle. And you think that's the enemy yeah. right there. You're unaware of spiritual warfare. But then there's a large portion of us, and I can be there sometimes. We're not unaware. We know of spiritual warfare, but we're unprepared. Yeah. We're reactive prayer warriors instead of being proactive. Yeah. You get smacked in the face, and now you have a prayer life. 
instead of I have a prayer life because I'm prepared that this is not a game. This is a battlefield. Yeah. But then there's another category. We're not unaware. We don't want to be unprepared. But some people, can I be honest, you just unrealistic. Come on. I, I, just, just, I've seen them. <laughs> you see them. I've Give me a story them. of somebody just being unrealistic, unrealistic that you've seen. I mean, a lot of us are church folks. You're in church. The mic messed up. Oh, yeah. The sound the system messed up. The camera. The devil. The, the devil don't the want me devil. to get this message out. It's such a good word. No, you're just unrealistic. You didn't plug it in. You didn't have a sound check. That's what happened in that situation. <laughs> you can't sing amen. It's not the sound equipment. It's not the sound equipment. Man, these speakers over here. <laughs> We're good for everybody else, but right. when you get on the mic, yeah, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to be unaware. We don't want you to be unprepared. We don't want you to be unrealistic. We want you to be unmoved. Yeah. Man, in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, stand firm. As the enemy comes, we're unmoved. Why? Because we know God has given us a burden. But here's the challenging part. If you get caught up in the day-to-day grind, yeah. the monotony of pursuing what God has called you to do, you're going to end up retreating instead of moving forward. You have to think with the end in mind. Yeah. Nehemiah didn't stop because he wasn't focused on what it looked like. He was focused on one day that people would come and be able to worship God protected from the enemy. So he kept the vision in the forefront. And so when you get discouraged, you got to remind yourself, this is what you need to put on your vision board. The promise that God has given you. Yeah. That should be on the vision board. That's the why. That's the why behind yeah. it. He doesn't promise that everything will go well in your life. He promises, hey, if I called you to it, I'm going to see you through it. And then that whole process of God is not just focused on you building your quote unquote wall. He's focused on building you in the process. Yeah. Man, I, I just have a question because this, yeah. this is so good. This is some good content right here. Mm -hmm. We know we want to play, pray. We want to plan and we want to pursue. pursue. But there, there are people out there, and I've yeah. been in this position before. Mm -hmm. Man, Nehemiah was a cupbearer. That, cup that bearer. was a good job. That's oh, a job that money. people wanted to be in. He was at the Palace of Susa. Now, that's the Winter Palace. Yep. He was hanging out. And it was a good time. What would yeah. you say to the people who are scared in their job, at the place that they are, scared to step out on the vision that God has for them. As for Nehemiah, that was building the wall. And yeah. I even know for you, I mean, at one point you were playing basketball, but you had to start stepping towards the things that God had for you. Yeah. I mean, we have to back up. I don't want to overstate this, but have you received a call from God? Like, I, I know it's so quick to move on right there. Yeah. Or is this just a call that you got from yourself? I've never called my own self on my phone and said, hey, Ken, how you doing? Ken, I'm doing well. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many Christians, listen to me, that call them self. God is not obligated to bless your vision and your dreams. I'm talking about a call from God. One of my favorite verses, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you what? The desires of your heart. Verse 5 of Psalms 37 says, commit your ways to him. Delight yourself in the Lord. In other words, I have to enjoy spending my time with the Lord. He'll give me new desires where his desires become my desires. My yeah. desires become his desires. Yeah. What is the will of God? The will of the God, the will of God is the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. So the more I get into the word and the word becomes part of me, then I want to fulfill God's agenda for my life when I commit my ways to him. So to answer your question first, are my ways committed to That's him? Good. Yeah. I got to get that. And then when I'm discouraged, when I'm distracted, when I'm divided, because that's what the enemy does, I have to have this resiliency. So when I say pray, plan, pursue, then we ended it with persevere. persevere. Yeah, this is the one. Man, we got to persevere because verse 20, I love it, where Nehemiah 4, he says that when you hear the sound of the trumpet, God will fight for us. So he tells everybody, this is what's going to happen. When the enemy comes, get your spears Get your bowls, get on the front line, protect your family, yeah. but God will fight for us. And I said, wait a minute. He had them put on spears, bowls, like they're about to fight. Right. And then he just said, well, God's going to do the fight. God's got it. Yeah, God's got this, man. So whatever you're feeling right now, whatever you're facing right now, God will fight your battles, but you have to show up. It's like yeah. you're about to fight the bully on the playground. He says, meet me right after school. <laughs> you have to show up. Yep. But when you show up, you got a big brother. Who's right His there. name is Jesus, yeah. who's right there, who's going to fight your battles on your behalf. He's going to fight for you. Man, yeah. I, I just want to encourage somebody. Yeah. Know that you don't have to do it alone. Yeah. God's going to give you the burden. 
God's going to send the people to help. Mm -hmm. God's going to be there fighting for you. When the intimidation comes, all you have to do is respond with truth, which is the word of God. Yeah. Quote that over yourself every day. Man, I want you guys to persevere in this season. Yeah, and, and lastly, we'll end on this, man. When we get to uh, Nehemiah chapter 6, Nehemiah is faced with distractions. Now you're getting to the place, you're pursuing what God has called you to do, yeah. but it's so easy to deal with distractions. So here's the first distraction we talked about, opportunities. 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 It says in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Now Sam Ballot, Tobiah, Geshem, and the rest of our enemies. Did you notice that? It started off with one enemy. Right. But once they got closer, it was more enemies. More and more and more they more. said, hey, Nehemiah, can we talk to you for a moment? Yeah. Nehemiah is building the wall, and opportunities become distractions. Is it a good opportunity, or is it a God opportunity? Man, if we can get to this place where you let go of the good opportunities yeah. to pursue the God opportunities, you will see God show up in mighty ways. Yeah, and, and rather than pursuing just those good opportunities, we pursue mm -hmm. God opportunities. Something good that you said was some of us just settle for a good life. Yeah. Some of us are content with just those good opportunities, but not knowing how sweet it is to really pursue those God opportunities. Yeah. And it impacts more than just yourself, but it impacts yeah. others. But you won't know that God has something better until you let go of what's just normal and just good. Yeah. So you don't know. Like right now, you're sitting in that seat. I got a good life. God might have a better life for you. Yeah. God's vision for your life, his burden, is better than the burden or vision you have for your own life. That's God's will. God's will is what you would choose if you knew all the facts. Wow. Man, yeah. it is easier to be a slave than it is to be free. <laughs> because when you're a slave, you're used to being a slave. You know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. But freedom is awkward. Freedom is what we're going to do. It's like in, in Acts, when Jesus ascends back to heaven, his disciples are just looking up at heaven. Yep, just staring. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> and Jesus is like, I was with y'all fools. That's how I talk. Message translation. <laughs> I was with y'all for three and a half years. I yep. told you what to do. But they just looking up in heaven. Just staring. And I think God right now is looking at some of us right now. Saying, you keep looking up to me. I gave you the game plan. Yeah. When are you going to get on the court and you're yeah. actually going to execute? When I was a basketball coach, it's, it's interesting. I would call a timeout. I would get that clipboard. Plays were probably whack. But anyway, <laughs> this is what I need you all to do. They go out there, wouldn't execute the play at all. Man. Wouldn't listen to the coach at all. Wouldn't execute the play. And how many of us are receiving instructions from God, yeah. but we're not just executing the play. So, yeah. man, this is the playbook. Yeah. Sometimes we get so caught up in what do we do? Where do we go? Man, it's just be obedient. To the season that God has you in and just follow the word that God has given you. So if God gave you a word five years ago, 10 years ago, yeah. go back and fulfill that word and he'll yeah. provide the next step. Obedience is better than, than sacrifice. sacrifice. I love that verse right there yeah. because your obedience is what's going to lead you to the promise. Yep. Your sacrifice is what's going to draw you away from the promise that God has for you. Yeah. So, man, as we get off of here, I, I, you're going to forget everything that we said. But I want you to pray, plan. Yeah and pursue. pursue. I want you to take inventory over this last year. Did you plan, pursue, and then pray? Yeah. We've all done it. We've all, this is what I want to do. I want to take this job. I want to be in this relationship. We pursued it. And then on the back end, we pray and we're like, God, how come you didn't show up? But what if we went into 2024? Yeah. We prayed. Come on. I'm going to spend some time right now yeah. at prayer. I don't know when this is being released, but in January at our church, we're doing 21 days of yep. prayer and fasting. If you go to crossover, man, I want you to engage and say, I'm not coming with any agenda. Yeah. I'm not coming with my, my vision board right. for 21 days, God. I want to receive a word from you. Now, if it's to advance God's kingdom and his agenda, why wouldn't he give you that word? Exactly. Like, why wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. Yeah. You know? And so that's kind of like me, you know, telling my kids if they grew up, like, I want you to go to the store and here's the list of groceries I want you to get. But I want you to go to the store and they're going to be like, well, get what? Exactly. It makes no sense. Right. I'm going to tell them exactly what I want from the grocery store. Yeah. Why? It's because it's to advance my meal that I never cook. Hot and yeah. ready is just it's feeling so good <laughs> right now. And so, um, man, pray, plan pursue now yeah. here's the part two so we talked about prayer we talked about planning yeah but i want you to talk about this man 
Like, why is it so hard sometimes that you might have the game plan, but it's so hard to pursue, to step out on faith? Because in Nehemiah 6, they were intimidated. Yeah. Rumors were happening. And so, man, talk about, man, even in your personal life, man, even you being here yeah. in, in Detroit, yeah. and uh, you pursue what God has placed in your heart. Yeah, pursuing can be scary. Let me just start off by saying that. Pursuing can. can be so scary. I mean, yeah. I, I graduated college, and the first thing God tells me as soon as I graduate, he's like, don't get a job. That's crazy. You went to school to get a job. I went to school to get a job. So what do you mean don't get a job? I mean, I'm currently uh, engaged, right? And so I'm like, all right, I got to provide for this family. Oof. I'm like, we're about to start our lives. What do you mean don't go get a job, mm -hmm. right? And then what happens, God miraculously provides everything. But I think it can be scary because it's the period from when you get the word oh, yeah. to when you see it actually play out. Mm -hmm. That period right the there, in that in between is where it can become scary. And the enemy honestly was sending intimidation. I mean, he was sending threats. And, and I was literally like on my knees praying, like crying, like, Lord, like, I know you told me this, this and yeah. that. But God is looking at me like I already got it figured out. Yeah. If you would just follow the steps that I have for you. And of course, the story goes after that, you know, the job came through. Pastor Ken reached out. We got connected. And a few months later, now we're here. I mean, what, it's been four months now? Doing this podcast. Yeah, doing this podcast. We're doing this podcast. <laughs> here. I was just thinking when you were talking, man, it's like, so God gave you um, a seed of a dream, but it's yeah. just like when someone gets pregnant, the baby doesn't come out the next day. Yeah. Right. There's a, there's a process of development that the baby has to go through yeah. in order for the dream to be pushed out, man. It's that, it's that waiting period. Yeah. But if it gets pushed out prematurely, then it's not going to be healthy in the way that uh, God wants it to be, man. Exactly. So, and, yeah. and what happens is like the mother has to take these prenatal vitamins, mm. right? So that she can stay healthy. And so literally all along the way, Come inside on. of these waiting periods, what God was doing was he was dropping little seeds. He was mm. dropping vitamins. He was vitamins. like, hey, I, I need you to go do this. Or, hey, I need you to make sure to put this on your Instagram and your Facebook. Little did I know, Pastor Ken was going through my I'm, Instagram I'm and my I'm Facebook lurking. page. Like all these different things. But if I hadn't have done those things, I probably wouldn't be here right right now. So let me just encourage you, make sure that you're following the steps. Like you say, it's not the yeah. leaps. He orders the steps. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be watching you on Instagram, <laughs> praying and scrolling all night. Well, listen, man, we thank you for tuning in today. We hope this encourages you. And so we want to come back every sermon series yeah. and just go over time. There's yep. so much that we can talk about. We want to give you practical next steps, man. If you're at our church, engage 21 days of prayer and fasting. When we talk about pray, we're giving you the blueprint, man. Yep. Pray for 21 days, overcoming strongholds. We got to remove all the barriers that keeps us from pursuing what God has called us to do. So do me a favor, like this video, yep. share this video. I'm going to do what my kids do. Subscribe, Subscribe. to this video. Yep. Share it. And we can't wait to see what God does in your life. Awesome. We'll see you guys soon.